What are your thoughts on supplementing essential amino acids or branch chain amino acids? Is there ever a context where you you think that might be helpful? Um, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of the branch chain amino acids, you know, my normal response is, you know, why eat a couple of, couple of amino acids when you can eat them all, right? I mean, it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to eat don't eat the full complement of, uh, amino acids. Obviously you need those to build uh, a functional protein. Um, if you're eating, you know, for instance, you know, you can just feed leucine, you might get a little kickstart in the muscle, but you can't sustain the remodeling response because you deplete your intracellular free amino acid pool. All right. So I'd normally say if you're going to eat, if you're interested in eating branch chain amino acids, just eat a whey protein supplement. Cause that way, at least that supplement's already high in branch chains and you're eating all the other amino acids as well to help support a, ma- uh, a more maximal response. Um, in terms of, you know, free form amino acids are, are interesting, right? So they're easy to manipulate, meaning uh, you can formulate those mixtures, no problem. So, you know, a lot of times when you're looking at an ideal amino acid composition of a, of a protein source, you want it to mirror the amino acid composition of interest. So for a lot of us, what I just said was your skeletal muscle is the primary reservoir. So normally you want to eat (laughs) amino acid. You want your food source to mirror the muscle protein, right? So, you know, we have a lot of nice work showing here's your amino acid composition of skeletal muscle. So if I was a manufacturer making free amino acids, I would I would match it, right? So easy to do that with. The the problem is, as I alluded to, they're just they're too fast. They're not. They're just too fast. They absorb in the circulation super fast. They come in and come out, right? So you're probably getting a good oxidative signal there with that. Those fast releasing food sources. Now, you know, Luke Van Loon has some work where he speculates that, you know, free amino acid digestion is effective. I'm not saying it's not effective. It does work. But perhaps the utility would be in an aging population. You know, you know, we know aging has some, um, some issues with digestion and absorption. So perhaps, you know, if you're an older adult who's having some satiety issues or compromise from a digestive health standpoint, maybe they have a role. But in a healthy individual, uh, young to middle age, I just don't see their utility. And I certainly don't see the utility of branch chain amino acids. I've never really understood that, Simon. It, the whole concept never made sense to, to fortify your diet with free amino acids. I mean, a good example is, you know, if you talk to the, uh, the agriculture individuals, so largely they're interested in maximizing food production. Right. So, you know, I'm here at the University of Illinois, we have a big animal science um, and food, pr- trying to maximize our agricultural growth and food production. You know, they generally will laugh if you tell them we're running around fortifying our diets with free amino acids because they've known for years it's not that effective. And actually, in their models, they induce what you would call amino acid antagonisms, where let's say if you eat too much leucine, um, you could interfere with the absorption of isoleucine and now you have a limited supply of amino acids and now you've actually in their models impaired growth unlikely probably to happen in our human model but still you know it's it just doesn't make sense to spike in a lot of free amino acids into our diet you could argue that in an old person who has an anabolic insensitivity throw some leucine in there that perhaps it can help kickstart their muscle but i i, I really don't see the utility in in it um for most individuals, let's put it that way. You mentioned collagen earlier, so perhaps we we finish here. Collagen supplements have become very popular uh, for skin and also marketed for, I guess, recovery from connective tissue kind of damage, you know, ligaments, tendons, that, that sort of thing. How, how do collagen supplements compare to whey or common plant protein blends if we're thinking about muscle and connective tissue. Yeah. I mean, the, coll- the college stuff was, was interesting, right? Um, I mean, the idea there is, um, you know, you can eat some chicken broth, eat some 
um, jello or gelatin. Um, the reason they were doing that is because sort of going back to what I just used that example of skeletal muscle and match mirroring the amino acid composition. They were for some reason doing that from the perspective of if I eat, I mean, the most simple way to think about it, and it makes no sense. Uh, if I eat collagen, I'm going to stimulate collagen protein synthesis, throw in a little vitamin C to help with the cross links. Right. Um, but again, you got to think about collagen has never been that nutritionally. It's extra highly exercise responsive, but it's not really nutrition. I mean, beyond its normal remodeling, it's never been really sensitive to nutrition because it's not really a, a good storage reservoir. Why would you want to make that a liable pool? Because it's so vital to transferring that force out of our skeletal muscle, you know, to the bone for subsequent movement. Um, so the, the concept doesn't make sense. And also in our normal eating pattern, proline, it, it's, they're not rate limiting in our diets. So I've never really understood why they're recommending collagen supplements. I mean, I'll come back to your point, just eat some whey protein. If you're that concerned, at least it has a better amino acid composition relative, um, to collagen. Um, yeah, I, I the work I've seen in that area, I just don't see it doesn't work. <laughs> and, and the science behind it doesn't make complete sense to me. What do you mean by pro, proline is not rate limiting? I mean, look in our dietary pattern is um, proline, methionine. We're getting enough in our normal eating patterns. We don't need to be supplementing with these amino acids. I mean, that's what our guidelines are designed to do is to meet our minimal requirement. Right. And so the reason you would supplement is, is yeah, per, perhaps if you're not eating anything, you'd have, you know, maybe it'd be beneficial, but a supplement is, is, is to be, you know, it's a set you're supplementing an adjunct to your normal eating pattern and somebody who's eating a well-fed fed diet, it would make zero sense to supplement your, your current diet with collagen protein. I mean, it it makes no sense. And I just don't see the physiological rationale. I never have. And the data doesn't support it. I'm not sure if you've been watching or watching or reading the data coming out. And it's always been shown ineffective, ineffective, ineffective. And my point is, usually when I'm reviewing that work, they paint the narrative of of why. But I'm like, at this point, we know it's the narrative doesn't make sense. So why I'm not sure why researchers are doing that work still paint the narrative like it's effective where we know, yeah, that might've been the rationale 10 years ago, but we know enough now that that narrative behind it doesn't make any scientific rationale. It doesn't have a scientific rationale. And, um, it's fine if you run those studies, but just, just shape it as within the current, the current knowledge. Um, so I'm, yeah, based on what I've seen, certainly not of an advocate for collagen um, for athletes. I mean, there's some stuff there for. I just don't even see it for the benefit for even if I'm injured. I mean, there's, you know, there's an idea there that um, so your collagen protein doesn't. So what you do is right, like if you're a pitcher, you'd warm up your 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 muscle a little bit. To, to stimulate collagen protein synthesis, and then you'd, you'd eat some collagen to help to help with the repair and remodeling. But I, I don't know, Simon. I'm I'm not convinced, um, and the scientific literature hasn't convinced me that's an effective approach. Yeah, I mean that's I guess my read on it. <laughs> at this, at the time, I can be proven wrong. But I'm not a I'm not an advocate. There's probably a bunch of people listening thinking, damn, I'm I'm wasting some some money. Or at least it's it's an opportunity to perhaps save save some money going forward. Well, I mean, I, again, I'm not here to tell somebody who's right or wrong. I mean, it's if if you enjoy incorporating that and you know, I don't know the taste of it. A lot of that is like whey protein powders. Some of it tastes pretty good, right? <laughs> and if that makes your life a little more enjoyable, uh, just like if collagen you know, the placebo effect is huge. If you, if, if incorporating that into your eating regimen somehow makes you feel better then you know, you can afford it, then, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, you know, be you. <laughs> I'm not here to tell if somebody's right or wrong. My only point here is, uh, I don't see the scientific rationale behind it. Um, and the, the evidence isn't, isn't there to support it. But again, 
uh, that's just what science says. And science is, you know, we're a little slow sometimes, right? So uh, <laughs> it takes us a couple of years to, to get the information out there. So perhaps there's something coming down the pipeline that could convince me otherwise. I appreciate your focus is more on skeletal muscle and connective tissue. But as someone who understands, I guess, how proteins are digested and then absorbed, um, something, you know, another claim that I've seen with collagen is that it can be broken down into these peptides which are absorbed as peptides, not as amino acids, and the peptides end up in skin. You know, there's a whole beauty industry that's built on this. Um, so as, as someone who understands the physiology and how we digest and absorb uh, protein, is, is that possible that consuming these collagen supplements does in fact increase these important peptides in our skin? Well, anything's possible, Simon. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, you know what, anyway, the point is so cool. Um, you know, some would argue, uh, but they do, they do transfer. So some would say you cannot transfer, uh, some of the original work was suggestive that these peptides weren't even making it into circulation. Right. I mean, I've done some work with like dilucine or dipeptides and, um, uh, other peptides, um, and they do in fact transfer. So to your point, perhaps, yeah, I mean, perhaps they are helping your, your, your skin. I mean, I, I've never, I mean, I'm not big into that area, but the coolest part is I would say you're correct. We actually see these peptides show up in circulation, which is actually crazy. And if you looked at some of this is even cooler. If you look at some of the, um, the Dutch research, I'm forgetting the lead author's name. Um, but they have evidence to show that in the post exercise state, you're getting better transfer of peptides, food drive peptides, right? And that's probably because you got to remember exercise is very damaging, right? So your your gut's an athletic organ as well. So when you exercise, obviously what happens is you start to shift your blood flow to your working muscle. So you under perfuse your gut, and then in the post exercise state, you get all that blood to rush back, and then it, you damage it. So when we think about gut damage, usually you look at it from gut permeability standpoint. So your gut's more permeable. And so what they think is that in the post-exercise state, you're getting better transfer of these food drive peptides because of the greater permeability, which in turn goes back to, you know, to, to my passion is that, you know, exercise and nutrition go hand in hand. You can't view them in a silo. I mean, the same things with protein quality, uh, you know, uh, as well, um, exercise is probably changing protein quality because it's based on digestibility. But, um, I mean, that's so cool to me that, yeah, we can transfer these peptides, but you're also getting better transfer in the post-exercise state, which is, which is crazy. I mean, it's so neat. So what I took from that is that, uh, Nick Bird is, is recommending post-exercise uh, collagen peptide. <laughs> supplementation for skin health, for, for skin for skin health. health. yeah <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's, that's the uh that's the raging I mean, beauty protocol yeah i mean yeah you're that's fair assignment <laughs> yeah everybody quote me on that uh i mean i i don't have the expertise in that area but to your point these peptides are transferring i mean um again i'm only thinking about it from a skeletal muscle perspective so you're very true um you know what are the other impacts? Uh, you certainly need to think more holistically. And I'm not the individual we be talking about collagen, pe collagen peptides and their uh, ability to potentiate skin health. I'm, I'm not the person to talk about that. So that's a very fair statement. Mm -hmm.